Hi, my name is Raya Samet. I'm the librarian for education, health, and human services here at the University of Michigan Dearborn. Thanks for watching this video. Today's video is going to be about what you see on your screen right now, but before we get started, I wanted to remind you that if you have any questions or you need any help doing research, you should feel free to reach out to me and I'll put all of my contact info at the very end. All right, here we go. This video is an overview of the research process. Some other videos I have will go into more depth. This is 10 steps to writing your academic research paper. First, you're gonna to need to start with your topic. This is usually pretty straightforward. For this video, I'll use the example, gun control as a public health issue. Now there's not really enough to go on here in order to get started. So in step two, I'll be actually turning that topic, that general topic, into a research question. Okay, I know some of you have never heard that term before, so let me explain what I'm talking about. A research question is going to guide your research. It's basically the question that you're trying to answer as you do your research and write your paper. It needs to be both complex and open-ended. What do I mean by open-ended? I'm an open-ended question is one that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no, or even a particular number. So it has a more complex answer. We also need to make sure that we're being clear, concise, and specific. So here's an example that's just not working. It's too simple, too broad, and not open-ended enough. Is gun control a public health issue? First of all, this is just way too broad. I would not know where to get started. And also, I could potentially answer this question with a simple yes or no, which is not what we're looking for. What we want to do is give ourselves room to do some analysis in a more complex way. So here I am at a more appropriate and specific option. Should Congress change the bill prohibiting the CDC from researching gun violence as a public health issue? This gives me some very clear direction. I know who I'm talking about, what it is specifically that will and won't pertain to my question. And that's going to really be helpful to me as I get started. But this is not a question that cannot change over time. My research may actually make it useful for me to change my research question if what I'm finding isn't compatible with my initial thoughts. That's just fine. Now it's time to do some background research. And I know you'll say, wait, wait, I have to do research before I do research, but this is really helpful. Basically, I'm trying to find out enough about my topic to make some educated decisions about what I should look for and what I need to know. And in order to do that, I have to think a little bit like a journalist and answer the who, what, when, where, and how, sometimes called four W's and an H. And as I find more items in my research process, these can each generate new questions that I want to learn more about. This is actually essential. So take your time and do some background research and I'll show you what I mean. I was asking myself things like, what's going on with this issue right now? What are the key terms that are used to describe it? Who are the important people involved? What are some of the main arguments on each side? And are there some similar examples that could help prove my point? So I know right now that some of my background research might be usable in my final product, but I don't actually care about that right now. What I want is just to get a basis for understanding of my topic. So it's, it's okay for me to use non-scholarly sources just for this part, just for the background research. They might not make it into my paper, they're just informing me. That means that I might be willing to look at, um, you know, web searches and look at news stories. Those aren't scholarly, but they could give me a good solid understanding of what's going on right now that will help me do better searching when I actually go into the databases. So I, did some Googling and I found out, oh, I needed to know a whole bunch of things. Like, 
what are the other public health issues that CDC has studied? And did any of those change outcomes for the better? And what is the Dickey Amendment? What other legislation regulates federal research into public health? Is there private research money, private gun violence uh, reduction research going on? Is there research from other countries? I knew that I needed to know a lot more. Once your background research is done and you feel like you're comfortable in your topic area, it's time to generate a working thesis statement. And I'm going to emphasize, again, this is a working thesis statement. It's not my final thesis. It's not gonna be the one that goes into the paper. But it is going to help me make a claim or an argument that I can prove and support with evidence from my research. So here's my example, again, just a working thesis, not my final one. Congress should amend H.R. 2612 to allow for the funding of public health research into gun violence, much as it funds research on other epidemics and risks that threaten the health of Americans. Do you see how this gives me some clarity about what my argument is going to be? I've made a specific claim. Congress should do X, and I've given some reasons why. But it's not my final thesis, and I haven't made up my mind about exactly what I'm going to be including, so I am not able to go further to my final th thesis yet. It's time to just get into the research. Step five, we're halfway there, and it's time to do the scholarly research now. We're going to be finding, reading, and annotated, annotating some scholarly sources. I'll talk more about what a scholarly source is in just one second, but first can I interject that there are some other sources that might be good in certain circumstances. Trusted government and nonpartisan foundation sources, which are often referred to as gray literature, can often be really great. But make sure that they're allowed. In some circumstances and in some settings, they are perfectly acceptable. And for other assignments, they may not be allowed at all. So just double check before you think about using these. I also wanna say that there's no one perfect search. You may need to search multiple times, change your search strategy, and use different databases or tools to do your searches. That's perfectly normal. If you'd like some more information about that search stuff, I've got it in a separate video for you. Let's go back to those scholarly sources. They're basically called scholarly sources because of who writes them and who they are written for. They're written by scholars for scholars. That scholar is an expert in a given academic field. They tend to be affiliated with a well-known academic institution and they cite their source materials. They also undergo a peer review process where other academics who are experts in their field review and make corrections to their work before it is published. This is a way of ensuring that publications are of rigor and high quality. And most scholarly sources though not all, are only available through library databases, so you're not going to be able to find them on the open web. We as a library pay tens of thousands of dollars to get you access to these wonderful scholarly sources, so just start on the library page in order to find them. Now we're on to step six, capturing citation information. Why do it now instead of later? Well, in my experience, sometimes it's hard to keep track of what you found and where you found it from if you wait until later. So while your memory's fresh, while you're first looking at things and reading them, capture the citation information. You can capture it manually, and I recommend the OWL at Purdue as a great website for citation information, which gives you citation styles and examples. Or if you prefer, you can use a bibliographic management tool. Mendeley is a free one that we recommend a lot, but there are some others like Zotero or EndNote that work just as well. So now you've found some stuff, you've captured the citation information, and it's time for you to take a few notes. Think about how do you plan to use this information to support your claim? And what does it mean? Why is it important? If you've been asked to do an annotated bibliography, these questions are directly relevant and the answers can go right into your source annotations.
Remember that what we're doing is evidence-based writing. Your claim or argument, that is, your thesis, is only as strong as the evidence that supports it. Just think of it just like a building. The building is only as strong as the foundation that it's built on. So choose a great, solid foundation, a variety of excellent scholarly sources, and avoid any mention of personal opinions, unless, you're, unless you are specifically asked to mention your opinion. Now we build an outline. The outline is going to give us the structure of the paper and ensures that there's good support for all the arguments that you're making. This is also the point in time where you'll need to go back and revise your working thesis into your final thesis. Remember that thesis generally needs that rule of three. And now that we know exactly what we're arguing and in what order, we can go back, rewrite the thesis to match exactly. It's time now for step nine, which is writing the rough draft. A couple of quick pointers. Remember to cite all the sources you use, even if you're paraphrasing them into your own words. If the idea wasn't yours, it needs to be cited. Focus on your own analysis of the issue rather than summarizing other sources too much. Remember that in most academic papers, we write in the third person, so avoid using I, me, or my. And again, in general, avoid stating opinions unless specifically asked to do so, instead basing your claims on strong evidence from your research. The last step seems so obvious, but it makes a huge difference. Please take the time to reread and revise. Make sure that you proofread thoroughly for errors. Read your paper out loud. If you're um, not sure whether things are confusing, whether you've missed punctuation, or whether you've been writing run-on sentences, reading aloud really helps to ferret out those issues. And finally, I'm going to plug the Writing Center. You can take your draft to a peer tutor who's been trained to help you with writing issues like mechanics, flow, etc., and they can really be a valuable partner in the writing process. You can make an appointment online, or they have some drop-in hours at locations around campus. And you should take advantage of that if possible. Other people who can help you include me, your librarian. I can help you with the research part. If you're looking for sources or you have questions about citation, I'm your gal. And don't forget to ask your professor. If you have questions about the assignment or whether you're meeting its goals, that's the person you need to talk to. And showing up at office hours is always a good idea. <laughs> Speaking of asking for help, here's all my contact info. I hope you'll get in touch and let me know how I can help you.